Hello and welcome Sneakies, I'm Sneaky G and this is a brand new indie game called The Novelist. Now it has a unique playstyle so rather than try to explain it to you, let's just get right into the game so you can experience it first hand. I do hope you enjoy. The Novelist. This is it. Wow, look at this place. Still can't believe the deal we got. Where's my room? Right up there, buddy. Now, unfortunately, the game doesn't have any kind of subtitles, so I have to try to keep quiet when they're talking, I guess. Alright, so basically, I am playing a ghost that is going to basically spy on what this family is doing that has just moved into this house. I guess I possess this house. And there's going to be all kinds of dilemmas coming up with the family, and I'm going to have to try to intervene and help them out as best I can. So first, I'm going to read this letter here on the dining room table. Mr. Kaplan, welcome to your home for the summer. We're very excited to have you. This is one of our most popular properties, and I'm sure you and your family will have a memorable visit. We have you booked through August 31st. Your security deposit has cleared, and our cleaning service freshened everything up on Saturday. Well, that's convenient. You can buy groceries at McClendon's in town, and if you'd like to eat dinner out, there are quite a few restaurants on Meridian Avenue just off Fairview. If you have any questions, or if you run into any trouble at all, please don't hesitate to call. Pete Fuller, Hanniger Rentals, Sydney Bluffs, Oregon. So the majority of, a lot of the gameplay, I shouldn't say the majority, is going to be go around reading little clues around the world, just like this little apartment like that. Alright, so the Kaplans can't see you while you're possessing a light fixture, so possession is the safest way to explore. You can jump from one light fixture to another in order to move through the house unseen. So a lot of the gameplay is going to involve me hiding in these little light sources. As you can see it's pretty cool moving around the house, it works pretty well. Now the difficulty level is set on stealth which means that the Kaplan family can see me so I need to avoid their line of sight whenever possible. I need to reach the office upstairs in order to complete the tutorial here, and just like that, we're done. Six days later. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Your goal in each chapter is to figure out the dilemma facing Dan and decide how he should resolve the situation. Each member of the family desires a different outcome and it's up to you to decide which path to take. If you remain undetected and learn the desires of more than one character, you can uncover compromises that will help the family. Chapter 1, Writer's Block after a week at the house, as you can see, it kind of starts typing out like it's like they're going to tell a story and then it actually unfolds in this actual reality here. Now, I've got to return to the office upstairs and look for a clue. Primarily, I'm looking for clues and I'm also going to infiltrate their memories and ultimately try to solve all these dilemmas that are going to come up in each chapter. Writer's block. I can't believe I just wrote that. Writer's block. There, again. Those two words are apparently the only damn thing I can write. I don't think it's been this bad since high school. Mr. Holder's class, an essay about Faulkner. Dan Kaplan, little-known author of Tramer's Way and Windsong, has run out of steam. Closed my eyes last night and saw a literary register article about myself. That was the first line. Paul wants three chapters next week, and so far I've got 2,000 words so sloppy I can barely read them. I cannot blow my schedule. Paul said Grofield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Why did this happen as soon as we got here? 
This was supposed to simplify things, but so far it's been nothing but staring at a blank page. <sighs> Maybe a walk will help, or a long drive, or a drink. So you can already get an idea of exactly what this chapter is about. Dan's facing some writer's block. Each character has a number of writings or drawings to discover. You found one of Dan's. Now that you know what's troubling him, you should search the house for him to discover more about his dilemma. Sounds like a plan. Look for Dan in the upstairs bedroom. There he is. When you look at a character, you can press space to see what they're thinking about. If this doesn't work. The cloud around Dan's head indicates that he's remembering specific moments from the past. You have the ability to explore his memories to learn more about the current chapter. Approach Dan from behind and press space to enter his memory. Alright, so this is the other primary way that the gameplay system works here. Now that you've entered Dan's memory, you can explore it freely. Follow the sounds to locate different moments that are on his mind. When you find a specific moment, press space to uncover more about what's troubling Dan in this chapter. You can exit Dan's memory whenever you wish and can return to it anytime by approaching him from behind and pressing space. So basically, I'm just going to follow the sound that you can hear clearly right now. And you can even see the memory right over here. I just need to locate these little ghost projections here. Do you think coming here will help? It has to. Alright, so coming here, it's kind of getting the feeling it has something to do with helping his writer's block, but there could be more to this story than we've found out so far. And as you can see, I've discovered two of the memories. Here's the third one for Dan on this chapter. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. It got me thinking, did we swing the pendulum too far just to get him away from those bullies? Kids can bounce back quick sometimes. What if this is the worst thing we could have done? Then he asked how Daddy's book was going, and without even thinking, I said, Great, my man. Felt awful right away. It's a white lie, sure, but why not be honest? When he was younger, he was just a bundle of physical needs, but now he's like a mental, emotional sponge. He's around Linda and me all the time, and I can see him changing every day in a thousand small ways. That scares the hell out of me. What am I teaching him with a white lie? Well, you might be teaching him to lie, too. You have found all of the moments in this character's memory. You can come back and re-examine them at any time, or you can exit and explore other characters' memories. So I'm going to have to do this for each character, all three of them, on every chapter. Alright, just taking a quick look around. Even though I am still in his memory, and let's just get out of there. Alright, Dan. Dan, we're back! Now that Linda and Tommy are home, you should look for their clues, discover what's on their minds, and explore their memories. Remember to stay out of their sight and use possession to keep from alerting the Kaplans. If you remain undetected, you can earn additional opportunities to influence their story. Vroom, vroom. Having fun? Uh huh. Search the house for more drawings and writings, or writings and drawings, rather. So I primarily have to travel between these light sources so I can remain undetected. I could just walk around like a normal person, but they would be able to see me. They can't see me in the light source, though. So it looks like we got something over here. He's looking out the window, so he should be distracted enough if I can uh, just get down here really quick and read it. Looks like I'm good. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, I hope this reaches you before you leave for the summer. I know we went over this in my office, but I think Tommy is a wonderful child, and I'll feel better putting my recommendation in writing. Children develop at different speeds, and Tommy shows no signs of a serious learning disorder, so the most important thing is to be patient and supportive. Make sure he does his reading exercises each day in a calm, loving environment. Make sure not to show disappointment when he struggles, which he will at first. Show encouragement when he succeeds, as self-confidence is critical at this age. 
If he fails to make progress when the exercises I've included, you may want to take him to the local pediatrician for further recommendations. I hope this is of some help. I look forward to seeing Tommy this September. Mrs. McMillan. Alright, so this appears to be a teacher discussing some kind of yeah. learning disorder that, that Tommy has. You can always press tab to see your progress and find out what you need to do to move forward. Press escape to view the help screen. Yeah, I don't need to know that. I already know all that information. Hey, Mommy. Hey, Pumpkin. Oh, that's weird. I can go right through the door. <laughs> well, I guess I am kind of a ghost anyway, so that's all right. Okay. Looks like Dan's coming to look up this window now. He's procrastinating too much. And I can see there's something else behind here, so I got to read this. Ideas. Alice listens in on the phone call. Problem. Ruined sympathy for Alice. Solvable? Probably not. Too cheap and easy. Seen at the lake? Alice sees them there? Could definitely work. Come up into her. Scott. Alice stays innocent. Sarah sees who Scott really is. Yeah, I think that works. Alright, so this appears to be linked to the story that Dan is working on. You've discovered enough about this character to find out how they want to resolve this chapter. Read their thoughts to learn how you can help them. That might work. Alright, so where's my notebook? Oh, damn! Oh, he almost spotted me. To choose this character's outcome, find the object in blue text and select it. You can continue exploring the house if you'd like to discover what other characters want to do. Character desired objects can be viewed by pressing tab. Alright, so I've completely found everything on this chapter. Just have to focus on leaving all of that back home. There appears to be something more going on with Dan here. So I've found everything on this chapter currently for Dan, so I need to go start checking out the uh, mother and son now. Have to make sure no one here bullies Tommy. Alright, so there are bullying issues going on with Tommy as well. So he's got a learning disorder, he's got some bullying issues. While possessing a light fixture, you can press E to make the light flicker. This will cause nearby characters to investigate the light fixture for a short period of time. Use this ability to lure characters away from areas you wish to explore. Alright, so that's obviously going to have a multitude of uses here. Provide distractions for my stealthing abilities. I'm just going to move quickly out of here. I couldn't find the way out. Alright, Tommy's room appears to be clear. Oh, there's something on the window. Alright, so we can already get a feeling of exactly one of Tommy's issues here. Obviously, Dan's focusing way too much on his writing and he's neglecting Tommy and it's not really making him too pleased. Your progress is saved automatically. You can quit the game at any time and your progress will automatically be restored the next time you play. Well, that's good to know. Racing Roger! Alright, looks like there is nothing else in this room. Let's check the bathroom really quick. Oh, really? No reading material? What kind of madness is this? Let's go see if we can check out Tommy and Linda, see what they're up to. Okay, Tommy appears to be wandering off, so the mother is now free and clear to sneak up on. Here we go. Oh, I can already see there's something on the door to read. There's something over there on the, the desk or whatever that I is. I hope this right. works. No distractions here, just us. Alright, let's check out your memories, Missy. Oh, there's one right there. Let's see. I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces for Tommy. If he knows there's something wrong, he's not showing it. We told him this is just a fun family vacation, and he seems to like it here so far. But this might be it for Dan and me. Neither one of us has said the word yet, but I know it's right there under the surface. We've been dancing around it. I can't even bring myself to write the word here. Writing it would be almost as bad as saying it, because once it's there, it becomes real, a thing we have to deal with. I'm not ready for that yet. We agreed to make this a fresh start, 
I meant it. I think he did too. Now we just have to treat each day like a new beginning. All right, so now we've got some more information on the situation at hand here. There appears to be some marital problems going on here. They might be getting separated. We don't really know. So we've got all kinds of issues popping up here. Oh, here's the other two memories. I promise. Me too. Me too. All right, so they're promising something to each other. I'm assuming it has something to do with the relationship issues. Like maybe they're promising they're going to try to work it out here. All right, not much on that painting so far. It's basically a blank canvas. Alright, so I found all the memories. I'm just taking a quick look around here. It appears after you find all the memories, there's really no purpose in staying in the memory here. So, let's go around a little bit more. As you can see, this little house here is pretty, pretty small, so it's... Not too difficult to find anything I need to locate in here at all. Alright, now we're out of that memory. Better get in here before she spots me. Oh, perfect. She's going to be leaving the room so I can go check out that door note. There we go. Alright, let's see what we got here. Pick up more canvases. Art store anywhere in town? Galleries or studios? Alright, so this appears to be a checklist for somebody who's, uh... Oh, okay, it's for Linda. Paul, good to hear from you. Listen, things are taking a little longer than expected. I feel good about this one, but I haven't quite brought some of the threads together. It's just an execution hiccup, not a lack of ideas. This is the most complicated book I've ever tried to write, and... Let's just say I have a newfound respect for guys like Dickens and Joyce who can juggle ten threads at once without getting lost. I'm figuring some of this stuff out the hard way, I guess you could say. Anyway, the outline I sent you is still good. Those are still the beats. Those are still the themes I plan to explore. I'll keep you posted, Dan. All right, so Dan appears to be speaking to his publisher or I guess his boss, rather. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, all right, now Tommy's the next one I need. I'm gonna have to sneak up on him. Oh, there's something on the wall over there too. It was like... All right, I gotta be careful here. Daddy's so sad about his book. Just us all summer? Alright, hopefully the mother's not going to see me. Come on. There we go. Alright, Tommy, let's check out your memories now. Let's see what we got going. Oh, something's outside, alright. We'll have to find out. Are there any other kids? Alright, so he's having trouble making friends, and he obviously wants to know if there's any other kids here he can become friends with. Pretty reasonable request. Now, where is the third memory? I can hear it. More than likely it's in his room, let's see. Oh yes, there it is. I see ya. Alright, it appears that uh, neither one of them are very happy in that picture, so that's all of his thoughts, I guess. Or that's all of his memories, rather. Hmm. Look at this one, Mommy. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to repossess him. Yeah, you can see that painting's not very well done yet. Me and Daddy can play Race and Roger. Okay, so that's that, that little board game I saw in his room. Perfect, she's leaving the room. He's probably going to follow her. Oh, of course. Alright, I've got to go take a look at what's on the wall over here. Oh, look, he's happy while he's playing Racing Roger with Daddy. Okay, so obviously that's going to be his outcome. Or his preferable outcome is that he plays with the Racing Rogers. Now, the thing that really is a shame is I'm only going to be able to pick one solution here. And then as long as I'm, I'm good with how I completed the, uh, 
the gathering of the information here. Then I'll actually be able to pick a, a compromise after the chapter is over. Well, at the end of the chapter, actually. Let's see, I'm going to do a little bit more exploring. Okay, she's coming here. Can still make it work. Well, if I have any say in the matter, I will definitely try to help you out with that. Oh man, I think he might have seen me <laughs> for a second. As long as they don't see me for too long, I'm good. Like, they might notice me really quick, but it's alright. It's kind of naturally to, uh, natural to expect that. Okay, now there's some other clue in here. I'm missing something. Because I haven't gotten Linda's solution yet. Just gonna wander around out in the open for a minute here. What the heck is it? Oh, look, some wine. Delicious, delicious wine. Yeah, see, Linda's is the only one that's not done yet because I haven't found all of her clues yet. Dan wants a notebook. Tommy wants a race and Roger. Where the heck is this last clue? It's gotta be around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I can see it. It's flashing behind the pot right there. Alright, well, she appears to be distracted. I'm gonna try to flicker this. Let's see how this works. Again? Oh, that's not good. It actually turned her in this direction, so I'm not gonna be able to sneak over. I'm gonna need to call about that one. Yeah, you do that. Alright, she's distracted by the painting. It's such a crazy thought. The three of us all alone in this house all summer. I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe it has a raccoon problem or a toilet that backs up. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, and I'm painting again. I got set up today. I felt a buzz right away. So much time to work. I haven't had a space like this in forever, probably since I left the studio. I went straight into a new piece today, got lost, looked up to see it was two hours later. I think this new one has promise. Though I still have some rust to shake off. Speaking of which, I'm going to go check on Dan and see if his new office is doing anything for him. He's pretty frustrated, but he has to figure something out soon, or this place won't be any different than home. Alright, well I'm going to try my best to help out these family matters here. We could have a bottle of wine and hang out like we used to. Alright, so what I'm thinking right now is the marital issues and the father and son issues are more important than this whole right in the story. I mean, that's still an important thing, but I think these other two are a lot more important to deal with right now. Oh, somebody's watching TV in there and they're laughing. So I'm going to choose the bottle of wine. Selecting the wine will choose Linda's resolution for this chapter. Dan and Tommy will be disappointed. However, if you discover Dan or Tommy's desired outcome and haven't spooked them, you'll be able to find a compromise with one of them in the next chapter. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick Linda's right now and then I'm going to choose uh, Tommy's in the next one by going for the race and Roger. I'm sorry Dan, but the Rogers block's going to have to be put on hold for a little while. Family matters are a lot more important. It's going to be really challenging trying to balance all of these over the course of this game. And I'm sure that the uh, choice is going to become a lot more difficult too. I cannot wait to get to them either. This game has a really awesome art style too, by the way. I haven't even mentioned that yet. I'm just a huge fan of this game overall so far. And I really don't see it going downhill at any time soon here. Here we go. The Kaplans are asleep. Explore the house for clues about its past, then whisper your decision to Dan. Alright, so as long as they're sleeping, I should be able to move around freely without any real concern about being spotted at all. Now I need to go find some clues about the history. Oh, here's one. By playing carefully and learning the desires of more than one character, you've earned the ability to find a compromise with any character you didn't spook in the previous chapter. 
you can only select one character for a compromise. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to go with Tommy's choice there because it's more important to deal with the father and son issue right now. And here's a quick look at my two choices. I could either do Dan's Notebook for the story or Tommy's Racing Rogers. Racing Roger, that's going to help his relationship with his father. I mean, it really seems like a no-brainer to me right now. Can't wait to see how it's going to evolve over time, but let's see what this is on the table. From the desk of Harold Baxter, Mr. Lowry finally gave in and agreed to let me inspect the house. I believe he simply grew tired of hearing me ask, although I think deep down he knows I'm correct. A property like this simply doesn't change hands every year or two without a reason. I noticed the pattern when I was cleaning out old files and this house kept coming up. It's changed owners seven times in the last 13 years. Wow, that's a lot. I began digging and not a single one of the sales was financially motivated. People just seemed to, to keep deciding that they'd rather live somewhere else. Which doesn't add up in my mind. The view is striking. The isolation and privacy alone make it a great property. The remoteness can't be an issue. Certainly, no one who can afford this kind of home needs to work for money. It's a mystery. But that's why I'm here. Alright, so now I'm kind of getting the feeling that the the ghost that I'm playing as is having some kind of effect on these people. Like, maybe he's attracting families here and then he's solving their problems and then sending them on their way. Either that or maybe he's causing even more problems and they're leaving because they can't take this house anymore. But I definitely think the ghost has something to do with why it's changing hands so often. There appears to be no other clues in here. Let's see what's in here. Alright, painting easel. She still has the same progress going on that painting, it appears. Let's take a quick look to make sure they're sleeping. Oh yes! New house is cool. You bet it is! Alright, no clues in here. Nothing in the bathroom. Doesn't look like anyway. Is that it really just one clue? Nothing in the writer's room? Hmm. Maybe there's something in the parents' bedroom. Let's see. Hope she didn't think. Hope this works. Don't worry, you two. I'm gonna help you as best I can here. Alright, nothing in this bathroom. Oh, here's something. From the desk of Harold Baxter, standing in the kitchen drinking coffee and admiring the view. I simply don't understand it. Who wouldn't want to see this every morning? That appears to be the great question of 45 Timberlane Road, or 451 Timberlane Road. I slept very well last night. It's a good thing the previous owners left the house furnished. It was just about as quiet as anywhere I've ever been. The only sounds today are the ocean and a few birds. After I finish breakfast, I plan to begin my inspection. Later, I was inspecting the upstairs walkway to make sure the railing was sturdy when I saw something odd downstairs. I'm not certain I can describe what it was, and I've already talked myself halfway out of thinking it was anything at all. It was probably just a trick of the light coming through those big windows. Alright, it seems pretty obvious that Dan has now noticed that there's a ghost in here and he's trying to convince himself that it's nothing, but eventually he might discover what it is. Maybe the people even eventually discovering that there's a ghost in here and they get spooked and leave. Alright, now I can't forget this race and Roger. I need to pick this. Select and race and Roger will choose Tommy's compromise for this chapter. You can only select one compromise per chapter. This seems like the no-brainer second option to go with to me, so that's what I'm picking. Alright, now I suppose I need to go whisper into Dan's ear exactly what's going on. So I'm just gonna make my way back into the parents' bedroom and maybe this will be the end of the chapter. Alright, Dan. Here we go. Why
The next night, Dan surprised Linda by grabbing a bottle of wine and asking her if she wanted to drink it and catch up after they got Tommy into bed. They put on their favorite Miles Tanner record and cuddled up on the couch, laughing and catching up on things before stumbling to bed. The summer was off to a good start for them. Dan knew it was important to start the summer off on a good foot with Tommy, but he couldn't find time to play as long as Tommy wanted. He knocked off early enough to sneak in two games, and he made sure to let Tommy win both, but his son was disappointed that they hadn't had more time together. Dan couldn't get past his writer's block. He laid awake for three nights trying to think of a way out of his jam, but he couldn't come up with one. He had to stay on schedule, so he forced himself to write a scene just to keep moving. He hated each word as he typed it, but he had no choice. Alright, thanks for watching chapter 1 of The Novelist. I do hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and comment down below if you enjoyed and you want to see more videos in this series. Subscribe if, so you can join Sneaky Universe and never miss another video in this series or any other ones from my channel ever again. Share and favorite this video if you want to help me grow and I will see you next time, Sneakies.